So you might be wondering why I'm wearing a big winter coat and you might potentially be seeing white puffs of smoke coming uh, out of my mouth. And in case you're wondering why that's the case, well, one, no, I'm not vaping on set. Uh, and two, no, I'm not sponsored by, I don't even know what brand this is, but a winter coat company. Um, it is because, and, and you guys don't obviously know this because I haven't done a uh, behind the scenes type of a thing yet, but my uh, YouTube setup here is actually in my garage. and. Normally that serves me quite well because it's away from the family, um, pretty quiet corner of the house that I can do you know these videos in, um, which as you guys probably know by now I do have a two year old so you know quiet corner is important. But um, where it doesn't work is when it's about to snow outside, which is actually pretty rare for where I live here in the PNW, and so basically it's really really cold and this garage is very very poorly insulated so. Long story short, if I don't want to freeze while making this video, even though I'm still kind of freezing, the winter coat it is. So bear with me because I just realized, yeah, that might, uh, that might be a problem. But anyway, um, what I want to talk about today is product photography. Now before I dive into the actual subject, I do want to give a little bit of a backstory to explain the product that I'm shooting. So first and foremost, um, this company uh, is not sponsoring this video, is not even actually aware that I'm using their product to shoot this video. Um, but long story short, it's a brand new product that I just got and I figured it's a perfect um, model, if you will, model product, if you will, for the for the video that I'm about to record today. So um, anyway, let's backtrack a little bit. So um, in my spare time, outside of photography, um, I'm also an amateur racing driver. Um, I spent quite a lot of years um, racing cars, just doing car stuff in general, and uh, long story short, uh, Formula Drift happens, uh, for those of you who know about Formula Drift, it's the um, USA-based uh, professional uh, drifting league. Um, it happens uh, every year in Seattle, Washington, which back when I lived in Seattle and now that I'm in Portland, not too far for me to go to, and I go to it every year. Uh, typically one of my sponsors, uh, Tan Suspension, um, shout out to those guys. Um, they have a booth there and the last couple of years my personal uh, race car has been uh, the demo car in that booth. So long story short, um, I'll spend you know two days out of the year with my car in that booth. I'll be there to talk to um, you know customers, fans, whatnot. And uh, as we're doing this booth, another company is set up next to us um, and their company name was Common Fibers. And so I kind of looked over to see what they did and I realized um, they specialized in carbon fiber uh, items and they do a lot of different car carbon fiber things but the thing that stuck out to me the most was uh, their carbon fiber wallets now I'm a big fan of just minimalistic um, everyday carry items um, and I might even do an everyday carry video later on but especially my wallet right I'm not a fan of the George Costanza if you guys know what I'm talking about right it's where your wallet's so fat that when you put it in your back pocket you're kind of sitting you know to the side um, I'm not a huge fan of that so I wanted a very thin simplistic, uh, minimal wallet, and I just so happened to have a wallet that was in the in the moment of breaking and falling apart. And so it was kind of the perfect um, mixture of things, if you will. And so as we're doing this event, we had a little bit of downtime. I look over, I see some really cool wallets, and I start talking to one of the guys who's running the booth. We get to chatting, and long story short, um, I pick up one of their wallets, which I had for about, I want to say two or three years. I really liked it, and uh, due to my own stupidity, nothing to do with their product at all, um, I end up actually tearing the wallet apart. And I reach out to them and I say, hey, I know you guys talked about you know some sort of a warranty, but I'm not sure what it was. Um, I just want to show you you know what I did to the wallet. Nothing wrong with your wallet. You know, just my fault. Just completely honest and upfront about it. And uh, they were like, oh, no worries. Um, we'll give you a pretty sweet deal on a replacement. Um, and they did and so it was really cool of them so shout out to Common Fibers for taking care of me on that end uh, with that being said this is the the replacement wallet um, that I just got and uh, as you can see it's and I'll kind of look to my monitor here so I can see it up close um, as you guys can see it's carbon fiber all the way around uh, real carbon fiber not fake carbon fiber and then the inside is nice and, and uh, you know thin and minimal uh, my previous one was blue and then they said you know you can actually pick any other color that you want or any other model that you want and so I wanted the same model because I really liked the one that I had but I was like you know I'm kinda tired of the blue let me give the uh, the green color a shot and so that's what I did so this video is not so much about the wallet itself it's gonna be about how I use it as a as a product for 
uh, product photography tips, but I did want to just take a second to say, you know, shout out to Common Fibers for making a fantastic wallet. Um, I really like it, and you know, just want to give them some credit for the um, for the excellent customer service experience. So, you know, if you're um, if you're into minimalistic wallets that function, that give you um, you know the best use of space in a small package that are tough and strong. I mean, this sucker is strong. It's like I said, it's pure carb uh, carbon fiber. It's um, RFID blocking. It's very thin, very slim. I'm just a huge fan of it. So I'll put a link in, in the description if you guys want to check out their website. But um, anyway, let's dive into product photography. So product photography is really popular. Um, obviously, a lot of companies have products. And I think as a beginner photographer, it's one of the easier ways um, to get a gig, a paying gig, or even a, a portfolio gig to get you to a paying gig um, as you're starting out. The problem with product photography, though, is let's be honest, a lot of products aren't that exciting. You know, if you get um, tasked with shooting a beautiful landscape or an amazing sporting event where there's constant action and a lot of excitement and you've got, you know, a photo of a guy jumping over another guy or somebody's dunking or, um, you know, in, in my case, a couple of times I've shot uh, races where, you know, magnificent supercars are flying by at high speeds and you get these really cool action shots and you know stuff like that is not too difficult to make exciting now don't get me wrong it's not easy to shoot either but i'm saying that it's it's not difficult to make exciting whereas product photography can sometimes be very difficult to make exciting for example um you get tasked with shooting i don't know new tupperware came out and the company's like can you shoot our tupperware and you're like it's Tupperware. I don't. I, I don't know what you want me to do with this, right? Or um, a bottle of ketchup, or in this case, a wallet, right? How do you how do you make that exciting? How do you make it fun, rather than just um, shooting the item itself, right? So that's kind of what we're going to explore today. We're going to talk about you know the do's and don'ts, a couple of tips that I've learned over over my last couple of uh, shoots with products, and then uh, I'll give you some before and after photos around you know, what it could have looked like and then some of the steps that I took to make it a little bit more exciting. So with that being said, this video is going to be a little bit different than most. It's going to be a lot more um, run and gun, if you will. I'm going to get the, the camera off the tripod. We're going to go ahead and bring in, um, you know, some extra lights, bring in some backdrops, bring in some extra tools. And you guys will kind of get my point of view um, as I'm shooting the pictures themselves. So anyway, let's jump right in. A typical problem with product photography is it's very easy to just take the product flop it down on a white background or surface and light it extremely well so that all the details, all the edges, all the sides of the product are very easily seen. Um, this is obviously good for the fact that you can see the product clearly, but it's bad because, well, it's boring. You just have this flat surface with this flat product with very plain lighting. Um, maybe you get a little bit creative and you go from portrait to landscape or landscape to portrait, but it's not a whole lot going on, right? So we'll go ahead and take two pictures. Um, again, one in landscape, one in portrait, and we can see what that looks like. Yeah, so clearly not not very good photos, right? I think if you were um, trying to sell your product photography, this would not get you very many buyers. And quite frankly, the company selling the product would not get many, very many buyers by showing off these pictures. So uh, and keep in mind, product photography is, is twofold. One, it's for the purpose of maybe a website or a catalog to show off the product, but it's also for things like social media where you want to have a little bit maybe more of an artsy look, a little bit more fun to get the customer excited about you know what the product looks like. So these two pictures are obviously not going to do anything for anybody, so let's do something to make them better. So next step, I think we start with maybe playing around with the background. Uh, instead of just a flat white surface, I went ahead and put, uh, I put the wallet on this uh, workbench. It's got a bit of a wood grain uh, finish to it. And then I put a black background behind it. Now that's already a little bit better than um, better than it was. I think the the contrast between the black and the wood grain adds a little bit to the photo. Um, do I think it's the end all be all solution? No, but it's better than the white, right? So we're taking this in a nice step by step progression. So uh, looking at it this way, I'm going to go ahead and snap two more photos, same as last time, one portrait, one landscape. And if we compare them, you can see it's a little bit better. Um, is it perfect? No. Is it good even? No. But I would say it's, it's leaps and bounds better than the white one. Um, but again, we're going to keep improving. So let's, let's take it the next step from here. So obviously the, the background is improved, 
but the positioning of the product is still pretty lame. You wanna have some room around the product itself to give room for other creativity, right? So right off the bat, I'm gonna make sure that I zoom out a little bit. That way the photo isn't the entire photo, just the product, just the wallet, right? The other thing is, is why is the wallet flat? It just looks boring this way. So I'm gonna go ahead and stand up the wallet and I'm gonna go ahead and open the wallet a little bit. That way it's standing up on its own. It's got a little bit more of a 3D effect to it and now it's interacting with the background and the wood grain below in a little bit more of a friendly manner. All right, so I'll go ahead and snap two pictures and now I'll compare them back to the original photo and you guys can take a look. Um, again, these photos are not perfect. They're not finished, but I would argue that just those two simple changes have already made them way better than the original photos on the white background. As I'm shooting this wallet, I'm looking around, as I mentioned earlier, I'm in my garage. I'm looking around and I see my toolbox. Hmm, okay. And now I'm thinking maybe I take the wallet and I have a way for it to interact with my toolbox. And let's see how that looks, okay? All right, so snapping two photos again. Um, so our, I'm taking everything that I've done so far and adding, right? So I've already zoomed out a little bit. I've already propped up the product. And now I've changed the background up even a little bit further. Here's two snaps. I think here we have a pretty large jump from the original photo to this photo. Now again, is it done? No, but it's a huge jump forward. All right, so now I like the background. I'm set with it, I like it, I wanna stay with it, but I can still do more to make this photo even better. So what can I do? Well, I can add a couple of extras. So for example, we're talking about toolboxes. Well, what's normally in a toolbox? How about some tools? So I'm gonna go ahead and line up these wrenches, which are gonna be really nice in the frame because they're, uh, they've got a nice reflective surface. They can kind of accentuate some of the lighting for me and it leads lines to the product itself. I'm also gonna go ahead and place the uh, Common Fibers box, which shows the Common Fibers logo behind the wallet um, to kind of add to the scene and to show how the wallet is uh, shipped to you, right? All right, so now that we've got a good amount of accessories, let's go ahead and snap a couple of photos to compare it to the original on the white background. So as you can see, we're making quite a lot of progress here. Already these photos went from super boring to um, better layout, better background, better added pieces to the photo in the wrenches and the box, um, added angle, added framing, everything's much better than the original. I would say this is a night and day difference. I'm still not fully happy with it, but it's definitely a night and day difference from the original photos. One of the last pieces that I would add to this is lighting. So as you can see, we're using just blown out lighting like we have been this whole time. And so everything's just lit evenly, which is not what you wanna do. You wanna have creativity in your lighting, right? So in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn on some soft boxes. I'm gonna turn off the overhead lights. I'm gonna go ahead and add some lights that are bouncing off the side, some lights that are hitting on the uh, stainless steel and the metal of the the toolbox and the wrenches to kind of give a little bit more of a pop. Let's go ahead and take two more photos and we'll go ahead and put them up and compare them to the original. So as you can see, it's now even better. Um, the lighting is, help, uh, is helping accentuate the difference in the main product and the stuff around it. It's giving a little bit more drama and mystery to the background and it's not putting everything in full view, which is good because you wanna be drawn to the product itself. So if you're looking at this photo, again, back to the original, not in any difference and we're already making a lot of headway. All right, so the last piece that I will touch on for product photography is edit your photos. Edit your photos because that makes a big difference. So in this case, what I'm gonna do is a couple of things. So we're gonna go ahead and pull up Lightroom here. The first thing I'm gonna do is I have a couple of um, settings that I've already pre-made. Because the wallet has green in it and everything else is black, I think maybe a nice yellow or orange will make parts of the photo pop. So I'm gonna go ahead and add this preset here. Yep, I like that. So it's got a nice uh, contrast to the green um, and it's making some of the parts kind of uh, highlighted, if you will, with that orange color. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that preset first. Um, next, what I wanna do is um, put a filter, a radio filter or mask just on the wallet. That way I can manipulate the wallet's color without messing with the rest of the photo. Um, so what I'm gonna go ahead and do is um, invert it, that way it's working on the inside of the circle, not the out. I'm gonna go ahead and punch up the exposure a little bit and now I've separated the wallet. I am gonna feather it quite a bit because I don't want it to be a, a sharp line, I want it to blend pretty well. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Now that this is done, I'm gonna just kind of mess with a couple of sliders overall, just maybe punch up some blacks, maybe punch up some light overall, 
just a couple of small tweaks here and there as I'm playing with it. And that's really the key to editing, right? Is you gotta play with it, you gotta try stuff. You can't, you know, just get it right off the bat, maybe one one preset and you're done, right? Even if you use presets, put a preset on there, but then tweak it, mess with it, play with it until you find exactly what you're looking for. Now, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is crop the photo a little bit. I've got a little too much background, so I'm gonna go ahead and crop some of the edges, and then I'm also gonna add some vignetting to it. Um, nothing too heavy, but I'm gonna go ahead and black out the edges a little bit, just to give it a little bit more of that, that uh, mystery to the background. And uh, I think at this point, I'm pretty happy with the photo. Um, quite frankly, I could sit here and edit for hours. I have in the past. But one thing I always have to remind myself is with editing, less can be more most of the time. Sometimes it's not. You need to add a lot of editing, but a lot of times less is more. And so um, I love this feature right here. There's a button. I'll put it up on the screen so you guys can see it. I have no idea what it's called. It's like the, the hash mark slash vertical dash button. Anyway, if you click on that here in Lightroom, it'll show you the before and after editing. So it gives you guys an idea of what it was to what I did and uh, kind of gives you an idea of what you do with your photo. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna show you two different photos that I edited um, of the wallet. And I'm gonna go ahead and flash them back in comparison um, to the original white photo. And you guys can see there's a vast difference between the two images. Again, the original was just plain, boring, nothing going on. The edited version has a lot, mo a lot more going on, a lot more story to tell, and I think it's just a lot more appealing to the eye. Now, this particular style that I chose to go with might not be the perfect image when it comes to uh, dimensional product photography, and I don't even know if that's the right term, but I'm using it in the sense of, you know, when you're buying something, there's a top view, a side view, a front view, whatever, that would be probably better served to a white, well-lit background. Um, this would be more of like an advertisement product photography, maybe like in a magazine, maybe social media, maybe on the cover of a box, you know, whatever more artistic feel you're going for. Uh, hopefully you guys learned something from this. Hopefully it helps out. And like I said, every little piece, it, it adds on to the picture to make it better or adds on to the photo to make it better. And again, the biggest piece is don't get stuck in what you're doing, right? If it's not working, try something different. Even if it is working, try something different. Maybe it makes it better. Maybe it doesn't, so you go back to what was working, right? So just kind of keep playing with it until you get exactly what, um, what you want. All right, so we made it to the end of the video. I am not completely frozen, which is a win. Thank you, winter jacket. Uh, I will say my fingers and toes are quite cold, but I'm in one piece, so I'll take that as a victory. Uh, with that being said, though, if you like this video and you found it useful, I would definitely appreciate you smashing that like button. Uh, it definitely helps with the YouTube algorithms, which obviously helps me with my mission, which is sharing my photography and hopefully helping others with their photography. So the more you like it, the more people see it, the more people I can help. Um, and obviously the more I can grow this community, so I definitely do appreciate it. Uh, I do make new videos typically once a week. Um, I've also got two other segments that I do from time to time, so uh, if you want to know when the next video is out, subscribe, hit the bell. Obviously you guys know how YouTube works, um, but I definitely do appreciate it. So uh, hopefully you guys uh, liked the video today. I uh, definitely want to hear your comments on maybe some other tips and tricks that I didn't mention uh, in case you're a product photographer yourself. Uh, I will say one of my favorite parts about doing this channel, again, is having that conversation with the community. So uh, if you're a like-minded person who likes photo video, obviously you are because you're watching this video, drop me a comment. I do read all of them and I do comment back to all of them. So I definitely want to start that conversation. Uh, anyway, thank you for watching. I will see you all next time. Peace. Pew, 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 lasers. I saw that at the end of a Saturday Night Live clip. He does lasers. Anyway. Shoot him again.